Hello there, uh, my name is Dr. David Warren. I'm the Operations Manager of the Materials and Manufacturing Academy. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming along and listening to our presentation on that was originally given on the 17th of March uh, at our open day. Uh, if you're coming back for a second view or if you're uh, coming for the first time, then I hope you find the, the information uh, useful. Uh, and if you'd like to get in touch, then please come and see us via our website at www.n2a.wales. That's in the centre of the slide. Uh, a quick snapshot of what we do. So the Materials and Manufacturing Academy, we're a postgraduate training project uh, and we rely on a uh, £25 million worth of funding that comes from the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the Welsh European Funding Office uh, and industry. As part of this, we incorporate what's called a Centre for Doctoral Training or CDT in Functional Industrial Coatings. Uh, and the aim of that is to produce um, highly skilled graduates in advanced engineering materials. Uh, and overall, the bigger picture, um, just, just, just to fill the gaps in then, uh, is that we're here to increase the affluence of the UK and Wales. So by you, by you coming along, getting your higher qualifications, you then go into industry, you help out and you provide them with uh, the skill set required to advance in this changing uh, world. Uh, and in turn, that will have a benefit to the economy uh, and further jobs and further manufacturing uh, and so forth. So, so we're really trying to do some positive things here. Overall, you'll be joining a cohort of 120 um, uh, uh, like-minded researchers. And to put that into perspective, that makes up about 50% of the engineering research students uh, in, in Swansea at the moment. Um, so, so a big chunk of it, there's a, a big community around you uh, and uh, to help each other out and, uh, and uh, to have a good time doing your research. For those of you not from uh, Swansea University, then just a, a quick snapshot for you. The university was established in 1920 by industry, uh, so our slogan is by industry for industry. Um, and the, that heritage has come through us now, so we're, we're a research led university. We work with many, many industrial partners uh, and we're top 30 research university in the UK. Uh, and then when we focus in on engineering subject, then we're, we're within the top 10 in the UK. Uh, and 94% of our research then is ranked as either world leading or internationally excellent. So, so we, we, what we're delivering is some really uh, high quality uh, research. If you look uh, at the image in this slide, then what you see is the Bay Campus. So this opened in 2015. It's a purpose built uh, second campus of the university. Uh, and if you look at the, the bottom half here, then all of this is the, the, the uh, engineering department uh, and this is actually growing. So what you see is that there's this little green space here is actually what I'm building on it now. So, so we're continuously growing the area you see there. We've got new construction going into that space. And I think that just reflects uh, the, the, the type of activities and the type of research which we're continually uh, able to conduct as part of uh, uh, our offering. Swansea itself, uh, it's a beautiful place. We, we can see here we're sat on the right on the seafront. Um, so we're one of the few universities in the world to have our own private beach. Uh, so that's a big plus uh, if you think about coming here. Uh, and we've got quite a large coastline. So if you follow the coastline around, the other campus is based somewhere around this region where you can see the, the point there. The M2A is an overarching umbrella title for projects which encompass doctoral and master's training uh, within Wales and it covers the area of advanced materials and manufacturing. Within the M2A we have a prestigious EPSRC um, CDT which is called Coated and that focuses on projects to do with functional coatings. All our projects are sponsored by industry, so our students get an amazing experience of working on an industry-focused problem. And not only that, they're embedded within the industry for a four-year period, so in terms of employability and opportunity for the student, it's a huge advantage in terms of their future career. It's a fantastic opportunity not only to gain experience of working in industry on a dedicated industrial problem, are working in an unprecedented scientific research environment with some of the best kits in the world, leading technologies. They get huge employability benefits through our training programme. We're currently operating at 100% employability for students leaving the scheme. 
Students who work in the coated CDT within the M2A get access to sector leading facilities. The ability to work from the laboratory scale right up to the industrial scale is an opportunity that is unique really to our centre. Some of our alumni have gone on to work in this sponsoring company and are now at director level so the skills that are embedded within the student through the opportunity of the scheme really makes a massive difference in terms of their future career. So in terms of our student population, we encourage them to travel out to companies across the world, but also to international conferences where they get to present. And within the coatings field, a lot of those conferences are held in the US, places such as Hawaii, Los Angeles, but across the world in terms of Europe and Australasia. So it's an amazing opportunity to go and see the world whilst also presenting your leading research. What we try and do within our portfolio of projects within Coated in the M2A is cover a diverse portfolio of coatings facing projects. So there's a massive opportunity to work at the cutting edge of science uh, with projects through the M2A. of um, the type of uh, offering we have for you. Uh, so if we, we stop for a moment and we think about why you, you're here listening to this presentation, then ultimately it's because you're contemplating uh, staying on and doing some postgraduate research. So this, this schematic just sums up where we are in terms of um, uh, our, our offerings. We've got an NGD or an engineering doctorate, which is a four year doctor research program, and that includes a taught element. Uh, but then we've also got an MSc by research, which is a pure research degree, which is a 12 months uh, research program. So if you think of it, it's like a, a mini PhD. So most people will be at this position now. Uh, and then there's uh, some choices to make. Do I go into a graduate position uh, and go into employment or do I consider doing postgraduate uh, awards? Now, many people are choosing these days to postgraduate award because it separates you out so a lot of people have the bachelor degrees these days so, so to identify yourself to potential uh, employers and many people will actually go into uh, postgraduate uh, uh, degrees uh, and then there's another choice to make do i go into a taught scheme so so where you sit in lectures uh, for a large part of that course or do you go down a research route and this is the offering that we have is research so so there's two awards which you offer that's an msc by research and an engineering doctorate uh, and that's what our funding uh, is for. Other options are PhDs, which is a straight three year, typically uh, research degree. Unfortunately, our, our funding doesn't cover that. So, so we're, we're uh, in this field. In terms of some of the benefits, um, we offer a, a general stipend, which is attached to, to the qualification. So as a, as a bit of a snapshot, um, your average graduate starting salary is around £25,000 for, for an engineering graduate. It does uh, vary slightly by discipline, but uh, uh, if we consider what we're offering with the NGD, then that works out as uh, 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 20000 tax-free. So when we work that out, taking into consideration your tax and national insurance deductions, then that's equivalent to around a salary of £28,000. Um, so you actually, when you start the NGD, you're actually earning more than you could in a, in a graduate role. Um, uh, but also, if you were considering the MSc, then that's twelve and a half thousand pounds tax-free. Uh, and if you work that back um, uh, uh, through to uh, the tax e equivalent uh, again, then you're talking around a salary of fifteen, sixteen thousand uh, pounds per year, and that's what you're getting. So, so it's a good offering if you think about it. Then you, you're actually paying you to get a qualification, and and, and it's at a competitive rate to what you're getting uh, through your first employment. Uh, the good output then is that we're highly employable. Um, so our NCMSC, the, the overall employability uh, for the scheme is 96%, as Jim said in the um, in the video, there are more recent uh, outputs have been actually been at 100% employment coming out of the scheme. Uh, if you do uh, take a look at the diagram, so this is, this is purely as, as an illustration more than anything else, um, but a lot of people are toying with this idea of do I go in at a, a bachelor's? Uh, you know, I'm going to a graduate role or do I actually stay on and do some postgrad research? Um, so what we, we tend to see is that when people go into an em employment into a, 
a, a graduate scheme, then they follow something that's along the lines of a linear acceleration. So, uh, so what will ultimately happen if you choose to do postgrad? Your friends who have decided to go into into um, a graduate scheme uh, will start earning more money than you before you end before you finish your your award. Uh, so if we would take this as an example of the your end point at four years, so you'd actually be earning less than if you'd done your uh, gone into a graduate role. However, what we see is this acceleration. So once you get into employment, we see many of our graduates actually getting promoted within the first year, um, and you have this accelerated growth. So so a lot of our graduates now uh, are coming out uh, and uh, doing extremely well and surpassing those individuals who have come in on a standard. Um, graduate role. So it, it does vary slightly along this curve uh, where the exit point is. Some of our some some uh, of our graduates are nearer this point when they go into employment, some are down here, but it's, it is all highly uh, employable and generally people do well afterwards. Uh, onto some of the, the, the vitally important stuff. Um, uh, we are funded, but there are funding restrictions in terms of who we can provide funding to. So the first one is you have to have uh, a two one or equivalent uh, in a in a first degree, uh, and that's a requirement to come on and study for uh, the postgraduate qualifications. The second point we've got is that because we're funded via Welsh uh, Welsh government money, which comes from the European Union, then we have to uh, have people who are living in Wales. Um, so at the points that you start, then you need to be living within the dark pink region on the map here. So, so what's referred to as point of intervention or point of enrolment, then you need to be living in one of these regions here. Uh, and you also have to have the legal right to live and work in the UK at the start of your study. So that's not just on a study visa, you actually have to be able to live here prior to you, you starting your education for that money to be used. Uh, the other criteria, which is more for the doctorates, then is you have to have ordinarily been resident in the UK for three years uh, and you're not able to fund your placement as well yourself. So we're given this money to help people get into these qualifications. So if you sat on a, a on a sizable amount of money in your bank account, then uh, the, the view is that you should be able to fund yourself rather than um, uh, requiring the funding that we're offering. So we do ask evidence at the, the start to show that you haven't got savings in excess of £71,000 or, or an equivalent income. So if you've got an income coming in throughout your studies. If you're working at the moment and you're going to stop work, that's fine. That's not an issue. Um, uh, but but the, these are the restrictions we've got with our funding. There, there is a bit more detail, but full details are available on our website. So this slide is just a snapshot of what you can expect from research life. Um, the big thing which you see moving from uh, undergraduate to postgraduate is that uh, you, you've got a 35 hour working week. So the expectation is that you're in seven hours uh, a day uh, for five days a week uh, and you're treating it more like a job rather than a casual uh, a study approach. Uh, so the idea of that then is you engage with it, you get stuck into your research and you're, you're progressing uh, with the results. Downside from that, obviously, you lose your 10-week holiday in the year. Upside, then you are receiving a, you know, a generous stipend uh, for it. Uh, in terms of the structure, then the MSc is a one-year scheme. You go straight into your research from day one. So go get in, understand the problem, do your background research, uh, and then you progress into the labs or into your experimental methods, uh, whatever they may be. Uh, and then do, do your research, come out with your findings, uh, and progress through. Uh, Throughout that year, we hold quarterly review meetings. So that's an opportunity for you to present your progress. You present that to a mixed audience of, uh, of your peers and also to, to some of the sponsors. Uh, and that gives you a chance to showcase what you've done, but also for you to receive some feedback uh, on some uh, suggestions for future areas of research uh, and also to discuss some of your results. Uh, we hold a, an annual conference uh, that's uh, normally in April. Uh, and that's an opportunity to present your work. So everybody in, uh, in the, uh, the, the M2A and COVID did get to present their work either as a poster or as an oral presentation. And it's a fantastic opportunity to meet new people uh, and to really uh, demonstrate all the good work you've been doing. And then ultimately at the end of the year, then is you should be writing up your thesis uh, and, and getting that qualification and then off out in, uh, into uh, the rest of your life. Uh, MSD is slightly different in the sense that obviously it's four years, but also in the structure which we apply to it. Um, so we hold an initial uh, four months of technical training at the start. Uh, and the idea of that is that you 
bring up that foundation knowledge to, to give you the skills which you need to get on and tackle that uh, research problem you've been given. Uh, we also hold a, a range of modules throughout the four years. So, so initially we're, we're, we're offering uh, technical training, but as you move towards the, the latter half of the scheme towards the fourth year, then you'll get more professional style training. So to give you some of those skills, which you, you will need out in the workplace. Um, the research structure itself, obviously, then is similar to what you described for a master's, but that's stretched out over four years. So again, the procedure is get in, do you understand the problem, do your background research, literature reviews, uh, and then tackle the problems, do your experiments, analyze results, come up with new experiments, repeat the process uh, until you get to the end, uh, and then get your thesis written up. Uh, Similar structure then, court review meetings happen, annual conference happens, you present in your fourth year, uh, but then also because uh, you, you spread out over the four years and the doctorate, then you're expected to submit an annual report at the end of each, uh, each academic uh, year, then we expect to see a, a, a summary report of the work that's been completed over that time. So if you choose to go down the NSD route, then there's a, a number of modules we take. So they range from technical, uh, which is what's at the start. But what we're treating you with an NSD is that you're not just about gaining skills. It's, it's about turning you into a, an individual who can go out and excel in the workplace. So there's a number of professional uh, and research and communication skills that happen with it. So if you look at the, the um, the blue column, so there your technical modules which you, you'll be studying in the first year, and then that's supported by some research you see in the pink, and then moving on to the grey uh, and, and, uh, uh, and the green colour then, that's more about your, some of your professional training which you can then use to uh, support and, and make yourself uh, into a well-rounded individual, uh, and you're prepared then you, to go into a, a management position at the end of your studies. Um, if you're choosing to do the master's route, then these modules aren't compulsory, but we are willing to, to take you on. You can come in and sit in the modules. If you, if you think something's going to be useful for you, then there's no issue with you sitting on. Um, the other thing is the way we teach changes slightly once we get into the NGD. Uh, it's no longer what's called a, a long and thin, so we a couple of hours a week. They, they, we teach uh, an entire 10 credit module. Uh, in the space of three days. So you will sit in the classroom for three days straight. It's intensive, but the way we teach is, is very uh, uh, intriguing and uh, and the way it's made interesting. So it's not, it sounds, it sounds very intensive, but the actual experience is quite uh, enjoyable. And then at the end of two week period then, so you have a few, few uh, days after the talk component that you get to go and uh, self-study. And then there's a, a, an examination or an assessment uh, depending on the module. So what do we expect out of you guys? Ultimately, we want you to get a thesis. That's what the, the funding is there for, for you guys to come out of this and get a thesis and get your qualification uh, out. Uh, throughout your studies, we're expecting journal publications. So, so journals are good for you guys. They're also good for us in terms of uh, enhancing the reputation. Uh, and we also like people who attend and present at international conferences. So that's a really good opportunity. There's a few slides coming up later on. Um, but a really good opportunity to go out into the world and present your work to a, an audience of experts uh, and get your name out there. Uh, and the other thing we expect is that people help it to engage with some of our outreach activities. So, so spreading the word for STEM subjects, uh, going out to schools, events, we've got science fairs, um, uh, other activities such as that. So we were always keen to get some support uh, and that will help bring more and more people into the discipline. Uh, now, doing a research uh, project is not easy. If it was easy, everyone would have one. Clearly, they don't. Um, so so uh, we, we have to acknowledge at this point that there, there is uh, a challenging environment put towards you. You're given a problem and it's up to you to try and solve it. Uh, but you're not alone. And we need to make clear that this, you know, it's not easy, but with that, we're here to support you. So there's a lot of support throughout your studies that's available. And that comes from your supervisors. It comes from the M2A support team uh, we have. The university itself has got harassment officers, it's got well-being officers, there's online support. So there shouldn't be some uh, an issue here uh, in terms of, uh, of providing support for people if they need it. 
Everyone's given supervisors, so each student will have at least one academic and one industrial supervisor. It's more common that you have two academic supervisors and one industrial supervisor. And the aim of that is that you get a, a homogeneous uh, approach uh, so, so that you get the, a good mix between uh, industrial relevance, but also academic relevance. So, so it's an industrial problem you're solving, but you also want to get an academic qualification. So it's getting the, 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 the good blend between the two. Um, and they're there to give you advice and direction. They're not here to tell you what to do day to day. That's your job now. You're coming in, you're going to do this research. They're there to discuss your results, discuss your th scientific theories and give you a bit of feedback and a bit of advice. So ultimately the project's yours and so it's up to you to become the next expert. Uh, and, and we don't use that terminology lightly. You know, a lot of our students are, are, are well-respected experts by the time they finish their study. The other thing I mentioned at the start is you form part of a 120 uh, people cohort. Um, so we, we use the word a lot, but the definition is it's a group of people who share a characteristic. So if, for the case of this, it's everybody's working towards a research problem. Um, so the key point of this is you're not a lone researcher. There's a lot of people working on similar topics. You can share ideas, bounce ideas from one another, or just interact on a social level uh, and take some time out and go and have a coffee uh, or, or, or spend time you know, in your own time if you want to go out and, uh, and socialise and it's good to have that network around you uh, and enjoy that journey together uh, and there's also a lot of group activities which can take place in. Um, so the whole thing with this, you've got this big cohort, let's get involved, there's lots of student-led activities, we've got social committees, um, so some of the pictures on the right there, so the top right was a, a stand-up paddleboarding day out where, where they went. Um, we've got other events, we've got course reps, we've got outreach work we've spoken about, we've got journal clubs, local society talk seminars, create your own events activities. So, so there's a broad range of different things to get involved with throughout your studies. Uh, so the picture in the centre there um, is from uh, the Institute of Materials Young Persons Lecture Competition. So. Uh, the guy in the middle row on the left is one of our researchers. So he came runner-up uh, a couple of years back. So that was the award ceremony in Armourers Hall in London. Uh, so that was a nice event for him, a uh, really good effort. And the pictures you see down the bottom then, uh, that's from one of our corrosion uh, se uh, sessions. So we had an away day uh, where all the co people working in the field of corrosion went out and they, they spoke about their research uh, and, and exchanged ideas and just said a uh, you know, good, good day all around. So, so there's a lot to get involved with, a lot of good uh, experience to, to have throughout your studies. So it's not all about pure academic research, it's, it's about the, the, the bigger picture and the experience. Other things, uh, then we, so we've got an industrial tour in the first year. So each year we'll go to some of the major manufacturing sites around uh, the UK. Uh, and that ranges from automotive sites to the pictures you see there, Lotus, and then obviously Airbus in the aerospace sectors. Um, uh, in in the past, we've been to other sites. We go to Jaguar Land Rover. We've been to uh, nu nuclear energy. Um, we've been to um, uh, JCB. We've been to Morgan Cars. This is quite a range of different places we we tend to cycle around. Uh, so it's a good experience. It gives you a snapshot of what life in industry is like, as well as working on your you know, your small or, or your big research project, depending on what you work on. But it's it's about the, the bigger picture of and ultimately where this research ends up uh, afterwards. Uh, I spoke uh, a little bit earlier on about the the conference. Uh, so this is held every year in the Great Hall in Swansea University uh, and then it gives the cohort a, a good chance to present your, your work um, to industry but also to academia. So it's a range, uh, uh, range of audiences. So, so we, we have lecture theatres here. So those of you in your final year will be given a presentation uh, and everybody else you can see in the picture here, these, these are poster sessions going on. So everyone else will do a poster. Uh, and then there's a good networking opportunities there and then this is our uh, the great hall itself then in the university and we hold a big dinner there in the evening each year um, uh, to celebrate uh, the output from our research the other thing i've mentioned is conferences so uh, the good thing about conferences is that they're usually held in luxurious locations around the world uh, so we range from everywhere, so, so the pictures you see at the top are conferences in Tokyo, so, so these are two separate conferences in Tokyo, I think that one you know, explains itself, but both of these, is, so we've got Sydney and we've got San Francisco, and um, other conference locations are the likes of, uh, we have Nice a little bit close to home in Europe, we've got um, Hawaii, is 
<coughs> excuse me, is a common one uh, that come up. So, so you know, these opportunities are here for you. So all you have to do is is present your work. So it's a great opportunity to be able to go go to these places around the world. Uh, and you meet a lot of people. You may read their papers, but you actually get to meet some of these people. Um, who do the research that you're reading about and have a good network people have got jobs at the conferences so so it's a really great opportunity to, to capitalize um, some of the FUQs we get um, so where will I be based largely depends on the project most people are based at Swansea University so there are measures in place now under COVID that we can spend time uh, uh, at, uh, at the university um, or, or be on a reduced capacity uh, but some people may spend a bit more time with their sponsoring companies who do have some individuals who spend a large amount of their time at their sponsor instead um, so so ask the question when you start and be clear on it so some pro some projects will focus largely on um, uh, uh, academic based work others will be more industrially orientated uh, when do I get paid? Very important question. So you get paid like a salary, so you get paid at the, the end of each month, um, and uh, and that comes out uh, on a regular basis uh, as soon as you're enrolled. Uh, can I visit your sponsor? Yes. So despite COVID, we are able for, for, to support people going out and visiting their sponsor companies, um, albeit uh, in line with whatever government travel restrictions are in place at that time. Uh, can you access a lab? Yes, so, so there's a lot of um, procedures in place now. We can get in the labs, there's strict rules, there's strict capacity, it's a safe environment, but importantly, you can get in and you can do your research. Uh, and then the other one, I need something for my project. Can I buy something? Of course, we've got generous budgets uh, in place uh, for consumables and travel and training. Um, so there's lots of procedures to follow because of our government funding, but uh, don't be afraid to ask. If you need something, then by all means, you can. Uh, probably get access to it. This is just a snapshot of some of our industry uh, or our research, just to give you a feel for the range of what we do. Um, so the first image uh, at the top left, this is to do with some work with the steel industry, looking at raw materials uh, and sampling. So this is a, a pilot center pot. Uh, another steel industry related project here is on uh, uh, it, it was a master's project trying to look at the engagement of hooks onto ladles. So this ladle here uh, holds about uh, 350 tons of molten steel, which is at uh, 1600 degrees C. So it's quite a challenge. Uh, and the crane will come along and it'll pick up these ladles by these hooks. Um, so, so there's a big risk associated with that in that you can uh, if the hook doesn't hook on properly, then you can tip over a ladle and spill molten metal all over the floor, which obviously uh, is a big no-no. Uh, so that research was to try and come up with a system where you could actually uh, log the engagement of hooks onto the steel ladles. Um, moving over to the right, this is uh, with a company called Lignia, who who have uh, a softwood, hardwood product. So uh, and a lot of the work around that is a uh, to do with circular economy, so trying to understand the product they're producing. So it's an alternative to teak, basically, for, for marine applications. Um, and then coming back down, we've, uh, we do a lot of research with a company called Cfex, uh, looking at alternative uh, wind turbines. And then the one in the center here is, uh, uh, is insulation foam, so coming up with a new formulation for foam that goes under buildings. So, so we also saw some of the issues that happened with Grenfell a few years back. Um, so one of the big challenges is how we incorporate fire retardants into some of these uh, these products and also being mindful of some of the, the environment and the reach legislation that we have to deal with. Uh, this year was a, a project we did a few years back uh, on, on hydrophobic and hydrophilic coatings. So this was using some, uh, uh, something called chaplains, which, uh, which is a natural material and you can actually um, tune it so that you can either have your surfaces hydrophobic or hydrophilic using those. Uh, this is some of the corrosion work we're doing uh, and then this picture here is uh, some additive layer manufacturing, some computer modeling of that going on uh, and then this is one of our green uh, areas so both these buildings you see down the bottom right are actually off grid. Uh, so they developed that Swans University as part, and, and some of our students form part of that group um, so they've got new solar panels on the on the top there. They're completely off grid. Um, there's solar capture, there's thermal capture on these buildings. So so something we're really proud of. But that's uh, another area. Uh, 
research goes. Uh, this is just a quick case study. You should be able to see it on our website as well. Um, but it, it gives you a feel for some of the, the, the range of projects we, we do. So you've got perishable, perishable food items, so such as red meat, uh, fish and poultry, then what they leave behind is a, is a juice. Uh, so if you've ever opened a meat package in, like the one you see at the top here, if you've ever opened that, then you'll see there's a liquid in the bottom of it. And that liquid uh, is, is referred to as meat exudates or meat juices. And, uh, uh, and quite often, if you open the package and there's a bit of a smell, the, the meat itself is fine. It's the, the actual juices that are coming out of it uh, are the, the cause of, uh, of that smell. Uh, but it's quite off-putting to customers. Uh, so what you see in a lot of products these days, you get absorbent pads in the bottom of, uh, of, of the containers. And so we had a student who's been doing a research project looking at the surface uh, and the, uh, the dimples you can put into the bottom. And he's come up with a new geometry for those, which will actually absorb the, the meat juice into the uh, packaging. So not only then is there a benefit uh, associated with improving uh, the longevity of the, the product, but then we've come up with a, something that's no longer using absorbent pads. It's a recyclable design. Uh, and just to give you a snapshot of that, then the stat down there, that avoids approximately 750 million pads per year going into landfill in Australia and New Zealand alone uh, was one example. So you can imagine there's a big environmental benefit to that research as well. But who'd have thought you were just looking at the uh, at the bottom of, uh, of a plastic tray, something we all check out basically in the house. Uh, but, but it's quite an advanced piece of... Um, uh, engineering has gone into that and we've, we've had a couple of patents filed recently for it. So with all of this stuff in mind, where do we go at the end of it? So there's opportunities, high rate of employability, as we said, snapshot of where some of our graduates have gone of late. So we've got material scientists, process technology specialists, technology transfer fellows, project engineers, graduate quality engineers, graduate R&D engineer, graduate software engineer, startup businesses, medical students bit different but somebody did go in a couple of years back uh, but when we look at many of our graduates then go on to take senior roles so as we go down the line um, so since around um, uh, since around 2000 then we're looking at about 10 percent of our uh, our graduates are actually in director roles within companies so they're in the, you know, right at the top senior roles within companies come back down so if we, we look at around a 10-year snapshot then um, there's still a high proportion of our uh, our graduates are now sitting in technical manager roles. We've got people who've stayed into uh, in academia and they're moving into leading academic roles. So people are progressing uh, up to senior lectures through to professors uh, and something a bit different from a few years back. But one of our graduates has gone on to become a weather presenter. So, so something a bit different. But again, uh, we're sure that some of the skills she picked up by doing the NGD actually had to get on and uh, and do it. Uh, a couple of examples quickly for you. So the first one on the left there is Professor Martin Brunnock. He's the hub director at Tata Steel UK. So, so the, the steel works in Port Talbot in South Wales. So Martin's now in charge of that. He's one of our graduates. We've got Dr. Fiona Buttery here, who's um, an enterprise excellence and business transformation partner. Um, so that's where the company will basically do business development, so helping other companies become better. So she's a senior partner there. We've got Dr. Pia Suvio, who's Director of Tailing. So, so Pia, uh, she finished her degree in 2009, already in a, in a director role. Uh, and then we've got Dr. Jim Boughton, who's Senior Director and uh, Head of Worldwide Medical Strategy uh, at GlaxoSmithKline. You know, so it's a huge company, and that's one of our alumni sat right at the top of that company. So, so it gives you something to aspire to. Uh, other examples, so Nat Wint with us, um, the lecturer at Swans University. Uh, and that finished uh, around five years ago, so she's managed to progress in the senior lecturer role. We've got Tito Minster, who's a technical manager. We've got Lewis Berry, a business unit manager. Um, Sam, raw materials specialist. We've got James Kerr, who's now the chief engineer at Lotus. Uh, and then a couple of other examples, Amy Luck as a munitions life assessment engineer. Something a bit different, something I didn't realise, but yeah, there is a job. Uh, and we've also got Dr. Jonathan Davis then, who's a lead cybersecurity consultant at the MOD. So, so we've got quite a broad influence across some, some you know, different sectors there. Uh, snapshot of the uh, of the projects we've got for you for the MSCs. So we've got a couple of corrosion uh, projects at the start with uh, the nuclear, National Nuclear Lab and Langley Alloys. So that's looking at some of the corrosion performance of different materials. Uh, and then coming through, we've got uh, linky, 
Linkios, who are looking at space applications. We've got printed structures for particle detectors. We've got NSERV in the battery field. LuxTech uh, are working on um, luminescent materials. WearTech um, are looking at different uh, clues in the name, wear resistant materials. Uh, and then we've got a couple of projects with Tata Steel um, on 3D modeling of high temperature uh, heat transfer uh, and also improving efficiency of wastewater treatment. Uh, and then there's a couple of projects down the bottom that we're waiting to be confirmed, but hopefully they'll be live on the website soon, or, or hopefully when you're watching this, they'll actually be live on, on nanoparticle coatings and nanostructures. Then. Moving on to the NGD project. Uh, so we, we typically fill in 10 of these a year. Uh, so there's, uh, again, quite a broad range of uh, projects we have on offer. Development of coated silicon microneedles are very uh, current in, in terms of all the vaccines going on, but actually being able to apply vaccines via patches rather than needing the uh, needing to have these centres to deliver them uh, uh, using syringes. Um, we've got a roll of thin film pretreatments and steel surfaces with BASF. Another one with BASF is understanding electrochemistry of uh, organic coated metal surfaces. Um, another one with KP uh, on the food packaging, so that's a follow-on from the example we, we showed earlier. Rolls-Royce looking at uh, mechanical characterization, uh, and then there's one with Swans University developing printed solar cells, um, which again should, uh, uh, should be available on the website now. And then we work quite closely with Tata Steel, so again there's a number of projects with them looking at um, everything from the, the challenges of decarbonisation, looking at the use of recycled materials, We've got two dimensional nano coatings for steel. We've got a development of zinc magnesium coatings, and we've also got one on erosion of organic coated steel as well. So, so quite a broad range of projects, all very interesting, and very exciting. Uh, what we would say is we, if, if you're interested in any of these, then please you know, don't wait for application, get in touch with us if you'd like to find out a bit more, really understand what the project is. So on to the important bit, how do you apply? Um, so first and foremost, it is a competitive process. You really need to make sure you're selling yourselves. We're here to help you with that. So get in touch if you'd like any help with the application process. Uh, look at the bold part there. The deadline is 5th of April. So we won't be considering applications after the 5th of April uh, for, the, for the current projects. Uh, make sure you include all the relevant information in there. Make sure you're clear on what you want to do and why you fit that project. It's quite important that you demonstrate that you are the right person for that project. Uh, and again, reiterate that you know, we're here to help you. If, if you want a bit of guidance on that, then that's fine. We're here to help you with that. Uh, <clears throat> once we receive the applications, we go through a shortlisting process uh, and then we invite to interview. So the interview should be held, uh, it'll be uh, towards the end of April, early May. Uh, and then that interview is likely to take place via Zoom and will consist of a, a short presentation of around 10 minutes. That will be on the topic of the project which you've applied for and then that's followed up with a technical interview for you to demonstrate that you understand the subject well enough to take on the research. Uh, once you get that you receive an offer from us and then all things being well uh, then induction at the end of September in person we live in hope. Um, uh, when you're given a bit of consideration for the project you have to identify which project you'd like to apply for or be considered for. Uh, you know, Give, give a bit of thought to it when you're going to spend either the next 12 months or the next uh, four years working on this problem. So you, it's quite important that you find it interesting yourself. So you, you need to be interested in what we're offering and trying to understand uh, uh, you know, what, what that research will entail. So it's, 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 a, it's a long old slog going through a research process. So it, it really helps if the, that subject is something which you are really interested in. Uh, so that's a you know, quick bit of advice on that. Uh, as I mentioned, we're here to support you. So here's a quick link. So there's a QR code available there. There should also be some information on the website now. Um, so if any of you want to book a slot with some of our project coordinators, they'll be available to uh, to, to discuss uh, the process through with you. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. If you do have any uh, questions, then please uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, the email address there is m 2 at swansea.ac. UK website again you should have found it if you found this uh, th th this video but it's m2a.wales um, uh, and we're, we're here to we're here to help feel free to approach us ask some questions uh, and we'll help uh, as best we can uh, thank you for your time bye now